Hi everyone, welcome back to Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by Kelby Wolf, who will bring you, among many great things, right here, Photoshop mm. User Magazine. There it is, in all its fabulous glory. Hi that. everyone, I am Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys, and I'm joined again by my usual sidekick and all around annoyance, Mr. Pete Collins. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good, Corey. How, How are you doing? Where have you been? How are, you, are you experimenting? Are you doing I've just things? been playing around. Oh, look, there goes my name right there. Bam. There, there's your oh, name it's right over there. there. So, uh, what's, what's going on? Just playing around. I've got a great new little plug-in I'm going to show you all today. And, you uh, do, actually. Uh, actually, it's a very cool thing uh, Pete showed me last week. I thought it was a really, really cool little trick there. And I've got something, uh, of course, coming up myself. I've got a really cool puppet warp trick we're going to take a look at a little bit later. But first, Pete is going to go ahead and kick it off because he's... That kind of guy. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, I'm a little sarcastic and weird today, mm -hmm. so you're, you're getting that. Um, I run over on the Kelby One website, I run the uh, Photoshop user, it's actually called the Pixel Fight Club. It's a Photoshop challenge, and I give people at least one image a week to play with, see what they can come up with. And last week, actually I lied, it was when I was judging image of the week for the Kelby One website that I saw a picture a guy had done and he had mentioned that he used this plug-in to create water on the on the ground there and I was kind of interested so I went and checked it out and I really liked this plug-in and I thought y'all might enjoy it. It's called Flood and uh, let me show you kind of what it does, give you a little, a little a little snapshot of it. And so here's a picture of a mountain range and I'm just gonna simply, I've loaded it into, let's get back over into Photoshop. I go to filter and I come down and the company's name is Flaming Pear. And you come in and you choose Flood. And this is the, uh, this is the uh, setup here. And the great thing is, is you've got all these controls right here where you can adjust the height of the horizon where the water reaches it, the horizon line, but also this offset here can say the horizon is up at a certain level, but you want the water level a little lower. You can change the perspective of the water, what kind of reflection it's giving you, and also the altitude of it. It's got all kinds of great little settings in there. And then the water, you can decide what kind of look the water is going to have, how wavy it is, how complex the waves are going to be. And then you can darken it up with brilliance, you can make it more of a, a shadowy type of water, or you can brighten it up, and then you can add a blur to the water, and you can add a color cast to it. But that's not all. You can also add a ripple to it. And the thing I like about it is once you kind of find a setting that you like, you can come over here and add it to these little dots right here. And so I've got some presets in here that you can see. It's like here is the mountain range and I've added the water setting and you see that little plus sign right there. That's the icon for the ripple that you put in there. So if I just simply take and click right there, it'll move that ripple where I want it to go. And the thing I like about this plugin is a lot of times you see other things trying to do um, water, trying to give you water reflections. I've tried to do it a lot myself and it just doesn't quite work right. And this one does a really good job. I'm really impressed with what's going on in here. So I've come in and I've just got a bunch of different presets for different looks that I want. You want kind of a mirrored, milky, uh, soft look. You can simply come in here and once you've played around, just save it. You want rough water. Uh, any of this kind of stuff and it just gives you a whole new area of being able to play with different types of look with the water. I think that one's called algae. They've got some presets in there that you can find and, and load up and it's just a wonderful program that you can work with, play with and uh, really take some of your uh, take some of your uh, landscapes or other things, especially uh, one of the things, if you're going to maybe a national park or something and it's a great view but there's cars or parking lot or something beneath it now you could take, get that shot, and anything that's got kind of that extra junk down there, just add a nice little uh, water flood effect, knock that right out, and it gives it a whole new uh, lease on life. And so uh, definitely make sure you go check this out. It's called Flood by uh, Flaming Pear. You could Google it, uh, and uh, I should actually have gotten the website up for you there. Uh, if that's we a don't, website? No, that's not the website. That is the code. I've talked to them. Don't look on my screen for a minute. Whatever you do, don't look on my screen. It's going to be that right there. Command C. All right. So now we go back over. You can look at mine. This is the coupon code for it, but let's put up the actual website for you right here. 
very small so you can't read it. Let's try that again. All right. And so you want to go to www.flamingpair.com slash download dot html. Uh, if you just uh, Google Flaming Pair, go there. But when you get there, if you will put this coupon code in, you can get 40% off. This is just for Kelby One members, people watching this right now. It is K-E-L-C-D-E-2-4-D-D-B. Just rolls right off the tongue. But if you'd be interested in it, I think the, uh, the plug-in costs about $24. And with this, you know, it's going to knock it down to around... 17 or something like that but is a I've been playing with it all over the place I love it make sure you check it out you know we want to do things here that are going to help you out give you more creativity and this one I've had a lot of fun this whole week playing with it so I thought you might enjoy it too well I gotta say when you first showed it to me I, I, I tend to be leery about plugins that are kind of one trick ponies because they do one thing and it's like hmm you know really but when you play around with this it's really interesting because you can um, adjust the interface you can really like he says re you know, like re resurrect a photo that would otherwise just be kind of boring and really um, really make it something much more interesting well in, so. in this picture as a matter of fact this picture of the mountains if we go back to it is the the image I gave for the pixel fight club this week so everybody that's joining in is taking this and doing something with it so I just simply took and I started playing around with the reflection of it and I'm going to show you some more of this on the uh, next episode but I started uh, just creating a whole nother scene in here that I'm creating kind of a castle Nordic type theme to it. And so it just gives you a new lease on some of your images and gives you more creative outlook for it. So I love it. I'm really impressed with it. It's definitely worth it to check it out. Adding more creativity. Something to reflect on. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break. We are going to come right back. I've got a cool little trick with uh, Puppet Warp and we're going to talk about a few other things. So stay with us right here. <laughs> Looking for a better way to learn Lightroom? At Kelby One, you'll be learning from people who literally wrote the book on Lightroom, including best-selling author Scott Kelby and Lightroom instructor Matt Kluskowski. Scott and Matt lead a team of some of the best-known names in the Lightroom education field who've come together to create the most comprehensive Lightroom training anywhere. You'll have unlimited access to full-length online classes that cover everything you need to know about how to use Lightroom like a pro, from start to finish. But these in-depth online classes are just the beginning. As a member, you'll learn even more about Lightroom from our monthly print magazine, Photoshop User, which has an entire section dedicated just to Lightroom users. Also, you get access to our Lightroom Help Desk, where you get private, one-on-one -on -one answers to your Lightroom questions, including troubleshooting, concepts, you name it. For years now, the creative world has turned to us as the resource for learning Lightroom, and now you can too. Whether you're in Lightroom Pro or a brand new user, this is a training program that grows right along with you every step of the way and is exclusively here at Kelby One. Okay, hey, we're back. Thank you so much for being with us. Hey, listen, if you are not a member of Kelby One, we'd really like to encourage you to be part of it. Part of the reason why is because we're part of it and we love it. We were part of it mm -hmm. before we ever on staff here, and it's just a great place to be to learn about photography, Photoshop, all kinds of stuff. I oversee the member website where we have Image of the Week every week, mm -hmm. Pixel Fight Club, there's all kinds of stuff going on. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, it's definitely a who's who of the best of the best in photography, Photoshop, and, and lighting. I mean, you, you name it, you name a prominent photographer out there, chances are we've got something they've done on uh, Kelby One. Like Pete said, we've got classes from him, myself, Scott, uh, Matt, RC, among all those people. Now, the other great thing about that is not only are these great instructors on Kelby One and have a vast collection of classes, but also they're instructors at Photoshop World. Yep. A lot of them are at uh, Photoshop World, and you can uh, definitely see them live, ask them questions one on one. It's, a, it's really a great uh, community uh, aspect, both Kelby One and Photoshop World, so to be sure to check out both of those. Um, it is a portal to awesomeness. And a portal to awesomeness. It really is. So, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't ask for a, a nicer uh, crowd of people and just people who are willing to really teach you the best of what they know. So, we're really excited about it. So, um, be sure to check that out, Kelby One. May I do hey, my Corey. trick now? Hey, Corey, you got a tip for us? Can I do something? Look at that smoothness I right there. I love this. I love it. All right. Um, actually, um, talk about pup, uh, Puppet Warp uh, in Photoshop. It's not a new feature, but it's a feature that you don't find yourself using often, but when you do have a chance to use it, it's really, really impressive. Now, recently I was working on a composite where I wanted to add some birds to the background of my image. Now, what I wanted to be able to do is manipulate them 
without warping the entire um, bird itself. Now here is a collection of various seagulls I've got in this image here, and I'm just gonna use my lasso tool here and just draw a loose selection around this one in the middle. Now here's a really cool trick I actually learned from Scott Kelby. This was years ago. He actually um, was teaching this at a Photoshop world when I was an attendee and was in one of his sessions. And if you just have a loose selection around an object and you go and get the magic wand tool and you just hold on the option key, it'll, it'll basically erase the selection around it and snap it to your object. How cool is that? Hmm. Isn't that pretty neat? Now, of course, the background needs to be pretty solid or mostly solid for this to happen. But again, you're just kind of removing that area around there and it's gonna to snap to the next uh, contrasting edge, which is the edge of my element. And boom, there you have it. So, oh, missed a little area there. Let's add that little back in. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. I bet it missed, I bet it didn't miss that a moment ago. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use quick selection and just. Uh... Just ignore that tip he gave you a minute ago and just go straight I through. I just missed a little area. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and just Command J that to, to a new layer, and let's, here I've got my cool little background here. Let's bring this on over. Hey, did I give you that bird? Yeah. No, no, it's a Fotoli image. Okay, I like to, so give, look, you, here's I like my, to give you birds. Here's my sir, my seagull. Just kind of, or now that he's not really fitting lighting-wise, so let's just make a little bit of a levels adjustment here and brighten him up a little bit. Look at that. He's in the happy sky. Pretty little bird. Pretty bird. So I'll put him here. Let's say I want to use that bird again, but perhaps in a different you know, place in the image. Um, look at those smart guides. They're, they're at it. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And just to, and if you, now obviously I've got a choice of you know, a couple other birds I could use here. But let's say in the event that you had just the one bird image, you wanted to do use it multiple times. However, you don't want it to look like you use the same exact bird multiple times. Which the eye picks yeah. up immediately. Which you can which start you can, to see the repetition and absolutely. go, oh yeah, it's just a copy. And you can try little tricks like perhaps flipping it horizontally and changing the position. Yeah, that looks pretty good. But still, you look at that and you go, that's the same bird. You just flipped it. So what we're going to do is go to this one here since it's bigger. Did you just flip the bird? I did. I did flip the bird. Okay. I can't unflip it either. <laughs> um, so on this uh, foreground one, I'm actually gonna go to the edit menu and we're gonna go down here and locate Puppet Warp. Now Puppet Warp is actually an interesting feature that carried over from After Effects. It was a really cool kind of video feature in, uh, in After Effects that no After Effects user ever seems to use. So they thought, hey, let's put it in Photoshop, maybe people will use it. And it's actually true, I actually like it better in Photoshop than I do After Effects. I'm not a huge After Effects user, but I knew it enough to play around in the program and you know, I just like doing it to static things. So you can see it puts this little kind of grid around the image, which I'm going to turn off up here in the options bar. You just uncheck Show Mesh. Now what you do is you simply just click on certain points of the object to establish um, control points. Now I'm going to put a few here in the middle just to kind of anchor the bird itself and now you just grab these control points and now I can reposition the wings any way I want. So if I need them to be in a downstroke like that and then you just press enter and then you're good to go. So you can go and do, undo it. So there he is. There's the bird flying. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and, and he's being tracked with modern technology. Anyway, you know what? That could be a cinemagraph or cheap little gif animation. <laughs> but anyway, but, uh, but notice, uh, just before I um, finish this up, I, I applied that transformation. And like many things in Photoshop, once I hit press enter, it is committed and I can't change it anymore. However, if you, before you run the Puppet Warp, convert your layer into a smart object, and then go here and run the Puppet Warp, you can actually apply it as a smart filter. So if I go in here and apply those same control points and I move this wing here and Let's make it look, he's gonna, do, he's gonna be doing a really kind of cool gangster turn. <laughs> and then now I'll press enter. Now notice here in the layers panel, I'm just gonna bring it out so you can see that you can see that it's now applied this puppet warp now as a smart filter, which means I can double click on this element and go back and change any positioning of those points I want. So you're saving yourself by having to redo it by simply converting it to a smart object and being able to apply that as a smart filter. That's a great little tip on that. So, so when you want to be able to mani manipulate things and not do an overall distortion on the object and really make it look silly, but use that puppet warp. And it, I've used it, you know, obviously it works on this, but you can take the legs or arms of a subject and really kind of read. And 
make subtle changes if you really wanted to, but you can do really comedic type stuff. There's a lot of really uh, cool fun to be had with it. Um, well, well, on a side note, RC showed me this. He did, a lot of times you'll take a picture pano or something like that, and you know when you stitch it together, it's got it, little bulges or whatever. Mm -hmm. He'll use Puppet Warp to straighten those out mm -hmm. to get more of the canvas that's usable. It really, it's, I mean, it's, it's a really phenomenal filter that a lot of people don't really use. It really has a lot uh, more use for it, and I think just experimenting with it alone, you'll start to see the possibilities with it. So if it's, it's in there in Photoshop, so check it out. So, what do we have next? Well, hey, Corey, I think it's time to give away something. We do have, we have a couple of giveaways. lists. We, of course, have our usual um, Peach Pit ebook deal. And you just go to peachpit.com, it's like slash Kelby1. Yep. And you'll see the current deal we have going on right now. Um, not sure what it is, but I'm 40, sure it's fantastic. It's 40% off our latest digital ebook over uh, there. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make sure that you go over there, check it out. It's a great deal, but you need to plug in the code KELBY1 into the coupon code to get the 40% off. Absolutely. So make sure you check it out at peachpit.com slash KELBY1 mm -hmm. for your Peach Pit E deal of the week. Cool, and of course we have our usual giveaway here on Photoshop User TV. What do we have? For well, this we're giving away a free ticket to Photoshop World uh, in Las Vegas. That's Las Vegas, September third. Yes, mm -hmm. third through the fifth. Awesome. If you haven't been, you need to go. Not only for the teaching, but the interaction, the inspiration. It's mm -hmm. just uh, one of our favorite oh, events. There's a website there right we there. Go. So there's the countdown. We're only 63 days away. That's going to get here faster than you think it yep. will. Yeah, so. And when you go there, you're going to want to take pictures, so you'll probably want to take along the Rogue Safari DSL pop-up flash booster. That's right. It's the flash booster. If you've got a uh, digital camera, a Canon or a Nikon, uh, this goes on top of the pop-up flash to give you that extra boost, shoot out there, and be able to illuminate stuff that's farther out there. That's by Rogue. So you have a chance to win this and the free ticket to Photoshop World. Ke Corey, how do they win? You know, it's, it's a shame. Price is right, never called. I know. Uh, how do you win? You go to kelby1.com slash webcast slash contest, and you'll go right here to the menu right here and look for Photoshop User TV. Enter your name, your website if you like, and enter a comment. Something you want to see on the show or don't want to see. We still want more jokes. We still want more jokes. More we jokes. got a handful of great jokes last time. So, But just entering your name is enough to enter you for the random Highly, it's very Coveted. high tech. Uh, it's, you know, we have the ping pong ball thing that just picks the, the name like that. So that will enter you for those fabulous prizes. And I believe that's it. That's I have, it. I have nothing else. Nope. No. Nope. We will back, be back here next week. So make sure you check it out. And we've got some more tips, some more fabulous stuff to give away. So check us out right here. Thank you so much for joining us, Photoshop User TV. Once again, I am Pete Collins and Corey Barker. Y'all take care now. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Mm -hmm.